As you guys can see, I'm in the holiday spirit. I got my Christmas tree up. Happy holidays. Now, let's talk about Selena. If it wasn't Tony, Tony, oh. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I have another video for y'all and this time, I'm going to be reviewing the Selena series on Netflix. Part one just came out on Friday, December 4th. Let's get into it. Do not go into this series trying to base it off the Selena movie with J-Lo. It's a totally different experience. Now, most of us are familiar with Selena Quintanilla, famous Tejano singer, international superstar. Unfortunately, we all know what happened. And her life was taken from her right before her big superstar blow up, international success takeover. You know what I'm saying? Right before her global superstardom. We all know what happened. And this series lays out the foundation of her life and her career growing up. And you really get to see a lot of different things. And like I said, don't go into this trying to base it off the movie with J-Lo. Because here's the thing, right? That movie was made two years after Selena passed, right? It was a different time. It was two years after. And it was a movie. You know, an hour and a half. They could only put so much this is a series and that's something I was confused about because I'm thinking I'm like I thought it was gonna like chronicle her whole entire life and career in this first series I come to find out this was only part one because the way it ended it ended with the father kicking Chris off the tour bus and I was like wait I know that's not it but I'm like oh this is part one when I looked it up I said oh this is part one so part two is supposed to come out sometime maybe next year and that's when it's gonna get into like the Selena most of us know, like from the early 90s and on, you know? I was excited for this. And when I seen the trailer, I know a lot of people was up in arms, a lot of people was upset, and they was like, oh no, she don't look like her, da da da, you know? They was like, no, she looks more like Jennifer Lopez portraying Selena than Selena. And I kind of caught that, like, as soon as it comes on, you kind of like, I'm like, oh, I get, what, I get what people are saying. Because this was a series and it was nine parts, it really got to break down a lot of different things that you didn't know about in the movie. If you wasn't like a major, major fan, I'm pretty sure it was stuff that major fans in this series didn't really know about. It got to break down a lot of different things. And from when she was a child to the Selena with the curly hair that, you know, because Selena's signature look. And here's another thing. Selena's signature look that we all know her for was the long black hair, the red lipstick, her sparkly outfits and everything like that. Most part of the series is mostly Selena with the curly reddish brownish hair and that kind of threw me off. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of threw me off because if you look up old clips of Selena, you know it's when she before she became before she had the long black hair and stuff, it was in part of her career where she had the brown curly hair and she was, you know, doing like the Janet Jackson, she had like a Whitney Houston type look, that type of thing. And that was for like a majority of this part one. That's how Selena looked, and it kind of threw me off, and I was just like, where's the Selena with the long black hair? I was waiting for it, and it took forever, and it's like, as it was getting towards that part of Selena, the, the signature Selena we know, it just went off, and I'm like, okay, I guess we gotta wait to part two. But I really like this, because I felt like this series, it was a more intimate portrayal, it was a more intimate look. It dug deep, it dissected a lot of Selena's life and career that most of us didn't really know about we we know the basic story but you got to really see everything and another thing with this is it's about selena right but it also got to flesh out the other characters and the other people and the other family members in her life like her sister and her father and i gotta say the actor that portrayed her father and the actress that portrayed her sister suzette they really stood out to me in this series because it was no it's like the way they portrayed them i could really see them being like that and it was like it just brought the whole story together and it fleshed their characters out because the Selena movie was about Selena. They were side characters. But in this, they each got their own storyline, plot. Even Selena's brother, Selena's brother, AB, it really gave them a chance to shine on their own while telling Selena's story. I say, watching this series, there was a lot about Selena and her come up, you know, from humble beginnings that you knew about, but I really got to see it from when she was a child and they was performing and like that whole process and like just the come up the natural beginnings the humble beginnings from how they started to where they were going and you know it was just a real inspiring story you know and seeing how hard the father worked 
and how he was such a disciplinarian and he was so cold on the outside, but you could tell he had a softer side, but he was real like go get a, and to be honest, in this type of business, that's the type of manager you need. Her father, he might have been strict and cold or whatever, like, but that's the type of manager you need in this type of business. It's really interesting seeing Selena's progression, finding herself as an artist, finding her image, and how when they finally made it to EMI Records, how it was like, okay, that's the dream, making it to a big record label. But then they want to tell you how to dress. They want to tell you how you're supposed to look. They want to tell you what kind of songs you're supposed to sing. And it's the real, the thing about it is, it really put things into perspective for me. Selena and her father, in the group, basically, and her brother, who was producing the songs, they were all fighting for that English album. But the record label took so long trying to release it. And it's like, the sad thing is, her English album and music didn't come out until after she passed, and it was a big hit. So it's like, damn, if y'all would've just listened and released it earlier, Selena probably would've had her crossover success early in her career. But instead, the real crossover success with the English album came after she passed, and the music was good. I'm like, if y'all would've listened to her, they kept wanting her to put out Spanish music because she was a Tejano artist, and we get it. But it's like, she listened to the father, and just let her do the English album and she would have crossed over. Yeah, I wanted her to be like Madonna, Gloria Estefan, and Janet Jackson, Winnie Houston, but it's like, y'all keep wanting her to sing Spanish songs. The majority of America, she has a fan base in many different countries and everything in America, but for national, a crossover, y'all should have let her do an English album earlier. And I feel like Selena would have had her crossover success earlier, but it was too late when it finally happened, you know? Like, wow. That really put it into perspective for me. It was really, I could really imagine that being the family dynamic of with Selena with the band and her family and watching them on the tour bus. The tour bus should be his own cast member because the tour bus was really prominent in the series. Watching her with the sister, creating the outfits, watching them shop in Target, watching them go from town to town, place to place, perform, perform, come up with the song ideas. That was a real intimate experience that the movie Never, you know, you didn't see that in the movie because you know, I you know, the Selena, you know, the documentary, you see pictures, you see interviews, you know, that movie, and that gives you a certain perspective. But this really gave you more intimate details, as you could tell, because it was a series and it was nine parts, they really got to give more details. And you said before, flesh out a bigger storyline for not only Selena but her family, and you got to see the struggle of like, okay, they're getting older and finding that balance between the career and your love life and personal life, and the father they didn't want. No, you know, no inter, no conflict with that, right? But it's like, you know, Selena's getting older. She's going to start liking boys. So is Suzette. It was a thing where they were so scared to like somebody. And it was like, oh, my father's going to fire him. Oh, daddy's going to fire him. And it's just like, it was that struggle. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I could really see that being how Selena's father is. Because you look at the Selena, you look at it now and you'd be like, wow. I feel like the actor's... Even from the supporting cast, they all did it. The mother, everybody, they all did a they all did a great job. And Selena herself, she did a great job too. But the only thing is, the likeness wasn't all the way there. And the thing about it is, here's where hair and makeup plays an important part in these type of portrayals. Because that curly red wig thing, it was it could have been better because the hair, it threw me off. It is not, because I know Selena had, it was a major part of her career where she had the curly hair, but I feel like the way the wig looked, it just threw me off. And it's like, I don't know it was, I looked on social media and I seen I wasn't the only one. That, that means, that goes to show how important getting the hair and makeup is right with this type of role and stuff because that threw me off a lot. But it didn't take me away from the story because her accent, her mannerisms, when she was performing on stage and when she finally got into the certain outfits and the hair and makeup and costumes, it all came together to me, you know? And she did a different portrayal than J-Lo, but hers still worked, you know? And I really enjoyed it. Now, I'm not going to lie. I watched this on and off for the last two days and there were some times where the pacing was a little slow and I caught myself doing the, you know, the, you know, waking up like, oh, Okay, and I had certain parts I had to keep rewinding because I fell asleep. The pacing got a little slow some parts, but you know, when I look back at everything, this was, I feel like it was a good job, well done, you know? And I can't wait for part two. This really was, it was inspiring to watch. And it was just, 
interesting to see Selena's growth from a child to a young adult and seeing how much she had in her career, how much she planned and seeing how it was a family business. It wasn't just Selena, seeing how everybody around her, the father, the brother, the bandmates, everybody worked together for this family unit to bring not only Selena up, but Selena E. Los Dio. Selena E. Los Dinos. You know, it was a group, it was a family thing. Even though they wanted to drop the name to just Selena, it was like, you really got to see a family unit working together to build success for everybody, you know? Also like how we got to see Selena struggle with English and Spanish, you know, trying to do the crossover, doing the English songs, Spanish songs, and trying to find that balance of, you know, doing the English music, but then, you know, your biggest market is Spanish music. A big part that stuck out to me was when she went to Mexico and she performed in front of the crowd and they was all excited to see her, right? But then she said, oh, I'm gonna sing a Jolie Watley song. And she started singing it and the audience was went from to And they kept going and then eventually they fit they realized like okay, we gotta switch it up and then they did the Spanish music and they all went crazy again. And it was just Selena finding the balance of okay, no, maybe not now, maybe later. Like finding when and where to do the Spanish music and when and where to do the English music. That was and another thing I loved was the soundtrack. The sounds, the songs they played in the background, because remember this was the 80s to the 90s, late 80s into the 90s. It complemented the plot and the storylines. The different ones and the main one as everything was going on, you know? So basically, that was just my review of the Selena series, part one. I can't wait for part two. I know this is when it gets into the nitty-gritty, when Selena's really, really rising, and you know, we get introduced to Yolanda and we all know what happens. And you know, that's gonna be its own emotion. But this is really an emotional, emotional ride, a real emotional journey to watch, and it was inspirational. And it just makes you think about how huge Selena was, but how huge she would have became, you know? But look at her legacy now, all these years later. I know a lot of people give Selena's family flack, and they, you know, some people talk down on them because it's like, oh my God, let her rest, let Selena rest. Oh my God, y'all always want, y'all always trying to make money off of her, right? But seeing all the things her family went through, and Selena went through to get to where she became, to get to where she went, it would be, I feel like it would be a slap in the face if they just let her legacy wither away like a dandelion. And I love that they're doing the complete opposite. This is why you can tell Selena's family goes so hard for her. And they always keep pushing her legacy. And they always keep pushing merchandise. And they always keep pushing her image. And they keep her legacy alive. And, you know, I wish the same could be done for other artists that I like. Who knows? I think out of this, maybe, who knows? Maybe a, an Aaliyah series might come out of this. Who knows? Maybe they may do another Tupac one. Who knows? Maybe another Winnie Houston one. Because I feel like this is going to set a bar for the potential that Netflix has in doing these biographical movies. The Madam C.J. Walker one was another great one. Only time will tell. But basically, I really enjoyed the series. The pacing got a little slow for me at certain points. But overall, it was a great watch. What do you guys think about this series? If you watched it, if you didn't watch it, if you watched some of it, what did you think of the Selena series? And if you had to, how do you think it compared to the movie? They each had strengths, they each had weaknesses, but overall, they each told Selena's story in a captivating way. So what did you guys think about the Selena series? Let me know down below in the comments. Let's get this discussion going. Let's talk about the series, let's talk about Selena. What are y'all favorite Selena songs? Let's talk about it down below. Selena, we love you. You were amazing. You still are. Your legacy will live on forever. And you would have been one of the top artists today. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.